Animations can feel overwhelming, but by the end of this tutorial, you'll have learned an easy way to animate for a 2D game. <laughs> For this, you will need any drawing software that contains a timeline tool. For today, I'll be using Krita, which is a free drawing software, and you can download it from the link in the description. First, we are going to define the type of animation we are doing today. Then I will guide you through Krita's animation tools and canvas resolution. After that, we will create idle and walk animation step by step. And at the end, I will show you how to export and make sprite sheets. But make sure to stick till the end because I will also show you how to make jump and attack animations as a little guide at the end of this video. You can also download a source file for this monster, follow along and have these sprite sheets as a reference while you're creating your animations. But if you're interested in how you can make your own character for a game, make sure to watch this video right here. Okay, let's dive in. Today we are going to animate this character by using keyframing. Keyframing, sometimes called pose-to-pose -pose animation, is when we create the most important frames first and then go back and fill in the gaps afterward. This is a simple way of animating without drawing every pose and movement. We are going to split the parts of our character and animate them separately. Of course, it all depends on what you want to achieve, but this way is the best option for a simple animation. Here are some principles to think of while animating the character. So we have posing, then timing and spacing. It's good to have these principles in mind and for now we want to focus on the first one which is posing. If you are not sure how to start posing your character, I suggest you go and take a look at different sprite sheets available on the internet to understand the reference. There's nothing wrong with studying existing sprite sheets and animation, especially if it's your first time doing something like this. The best resolution for 2D game characters can vary depending on specific requirements of a project, platform you're using, and targeted device. However, some common resolutions are often used in the industry. And for this animation project, we will create 512 by 512 with 150 pixels per inch. So go on file and create a new document and type these dimensions and press create. We are keeping our project at a high resolution so we can downscale it later if needed. Now that we have our document ready, let's import the character we created. So open that file and drag the layers into new document. If your character was in the right dimension, you don't need to adjust its size. But if you need to do that, press Ctrl T and adjust the size. Krita has an amazing option to help us with the animation process and it is super easy to use. So go to Window Workspace and press Animation. And now we get this timeline and setup for animation process. There are a few very useful tools that we are going to use in this process. One is Onion Skin, which helps us see the previous and future frames we created. The other tool is this timeline where we'll create our character and then we have frames where we will create different poses to form an animation. The more keyframes you have the more smooth animation will be and because this one is a pretty basic and easy to make we will make it 10 frames long. Make sure to turn on the onion skins and to do that select the layer and then add a blank frame. When you do that you'll see this little light bulb and make sure to turn it on and now repeat the same steps for the rest of the layers. Now go to the last frame and set it as an end time by pressing right click and then set end time. And for this action, we only need to move the character up and down. Let's copy the first frames for each part and paste them on the last frames because first and last frames are always the same in this type of animation. So let's put on the fifth frame the highest point for our character. Make sure to select the right layer, in this case the body layer, and select the fifth frame. Click on the character and move the body with arrows on your keyboard for more precise movement or you can do that with your mouse as well. Let's say that the highest point is almost at the same height as the top of his legs. And now we can align the rest of the frames. You can also change the color of this frame so you don't get confused. So press right click on the frame and change the color however you want. For this one I'm going with yellow. And from now on, we need to fill in the rest of the frames. So go on on the first frame, make sure to click on the layer and on the frame. So you need to be on the same frame and layer. Now use transform tool, control T on your keyboard and slightly move the body of the character up. Then go to the second frame, move it a little bit more. Then on the third one, fourth, and you'll get to the fifth one. If you're not satisfied with those four frames, you can always go back and adjust the height of your character to get that smooth transition between frames. And now from the fifth frame to the 10th frame, we are doing exactly the same, but now we need to move our character down until we reach the end position. 
And then when we play the animation, we get this breathing idle position for our character. Now we need to adjust the movement of the tail. So when the body goes up, the tail goes slightly down. So again, go to the fifth frame and then adjust the position to the lowest point for the tail. To adjust the tail, click on the tail on the canvas and you'll get this transform tool. So move the anchor point to the top right corner of the selected area. And this way, when we move the tail, it will only rotate around that anchor point. This is very optional. You can leave the anchor point in the middle, but the tail looks more natural while moving this way. Each time we want to make a new frame, we need to adjust the anchor point before rotating the tail to achieve uniform movement. And you can see onion skins colored red for previous frames and green for the next frames. In this case, the legs stay static. And if you do want to push it to the next level, you can animate the eyes and eyebrows as well. Sometimes can get overwhelming with so many onion skins. And in that case, you can turn off the visibility of the layers and concentrate only on one layer at a time. After you're done, you can preview it by pressing the play button. And you can also adjust the speed to see how it would look if you speed it up or slow it down. And now that we know how to use animation tools, let's create a walk cycle. Usually we would make four main keyframes. That would be beginning position, anticipation, stretch, and end position. But the walk cycle is a little bit different and we can break it down to seven main keyframes. So first and the last one would be exactly the same. First one is beginning and the last one is end position. Second keyframe is anticipation which is a movement that shows what they're about to do next. Third keyframe is the first passing pose when both legs are passing each other. Fourth keyframe is the first forward contact point when the front leg touches the ground. Fifth frame is the second passing pose. And the sixth keyframe is back contact point when the body and the leg are slowly coming back to its original position. And when we combine those seven keyframes, we can already tell that they form a walking cycle. All we need to do next is to fill in the middle of those keyframes. For this moment, let's make 16 frames. So go on the 16th frame and set it as an end time. Of course, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter, but 16 frames are just enough for this simple movement. So the easiest way to describe this action is the legs are moving in a circular motion while the body is swinging back and forth. So we already have the beginning position. Now let's copy and paste all of those frames on the last frame. Let's make anticipation movement on the fourth frame. As we said, anticipation is a movement that shows what they're about to do next. Don't forget to turn on the onion skins and when you move a certain part, make sure that you're on the same layer and frame. Okay, first let's adjust the body. So click on the character and press Control T for transform tool and move that anchor point to the middle bottom point. If we keep the anchor point in the center, then the rotation will look a little bit off when he is leaning forward and back. Rotate the body to the left and you can also color the frame yellow or any other color to mark that first keyframe. The tail is in this case moving upwards, so rotate it to its highest point. You can keep the anchor point in the center or you can try out different rotation points. Next, let's move the left leg up and to the right, but make sure it's not in the center of the character. You don't have to be perfectly precise right now because we will go back and adjust and fix the parts we need but you can also experiment with different positions to see which one looks better. And for the right leg, just move it to the left by holding shift on your keyboard, but again, don't place it in the center of the character. In the sixth frame, we are only moving the legs while the body and the tail are staying in the same position. Move the left leg a little bit past the center and the right leg to the center by holding shift on your keyboard. Again, you can color it or you don't have to, but I'm gonna color them orange. Moving on to the ninth frame where the left leg is making contact with the ground. So the body is leaning forward and the tail is going down. As for the legs, the left leg is on the ground on the front and the right leg is even more pushed back. Color these keyframes green. Let's go on the 11th frame and create the second passing pose. If you want to keep the animation smarter, you can move the body forward on this frame and the tail even lower, even though the difference between the frames is minimal and you can keep them in the same position. As for the legs, the left leg is coming to the center of the character and the right leg is going behind the character. Even though we do not see it in this frame, make sure to place it there. 
and we are on the final keyframe when the left leg is making back contact with the ground and everything is slowly coming back to its natural position. On the 15th frame, adjust every part as the final frames before they completely go back to their beginning or end positions. And now it's time to go back and fill in those empty frames to smooth out the action. Don't forget to turn on the onion skins to help you see what and where you need to move a certain body part. You can make changes through the whole process and always go back and fix the parts, even the keyframes you already created. My tactic for this step is to check on the two frames and mark the path I need to fill. For example, I switch between the beginning frame and the fourth frame to see where I need to place the certain part. Onion skins help a lot in that process, but they can be really overwhelming. So I always turn off the layers I don't use at the moment. Make sure to move the anchor point on each frame if you decided to move it in the first place. Only that way you can contain uniform and smooth movement. This process takes time and maybe at first you will not be satisfied with how it looks, but keep in mind that you're in control of this and you can completely change the animation if you need or want to. Study different spreadsheets just to get an idea of how it should look and then experiment with the animation process. Be careful when you're moving and making new frames because sometimes even the smallest movement or the mouse click can change the whole animation and it will be hard to spot where did you make a mistake. Overall, this way of animating is super easy and doesn't take too much time once you learn the process. And please note that I'm not saying that this is the only way to animate the characters for 2D games, but it's the easiest. And you can use and completely copy my spreadsheets for a character to learn and understand them. Once you're done with everything, check out how your animation looks and see if there are any errors, you need to go back and fix it. If not, your animation is done and ready to export. Now when you're done with your animations, it's time to export the frames and make the spreadsheets. In Krita that's very easy to make, so go on file, go down to render animation and make sure to click on image sequence. Here you can choose where you want to save your frames. When you're done with that, press OK. And now we have individual frames which are perfectly ready to be used in GameMaker. In the GameMaker sprite editor, you can click import and select these files to import them as one animation. I will also show you how you can optionally create a spreadsheet if you want to use that particular format. Open the grid file that you can download and import all the frames in this document that you just exported and press insert many layers. Okay, now we have all of the frames inserted as individual layers. So now we need to resize and scale down our character to fit these little boxes. That's why I always say that it's good to have your original artwork in high resolution in case you need to scale it down. Click the first layer right here and by holding shift, click the last layer. So every layer is selected. Now press control G on your keyboard to group all of the layers. And now we can resize all of the frames and layers at the same time. So click on the group and press on the character right here. And now by holding shift on your keyboard, scale them down to fit the box. Make sure to hold the shift while you're moving the layers to evenly move them around the canvas and try to place them in the center of the box. After you're done with that, turn off the grid layer before exporting. Okay, and now export it as a PNG and we can call it walk sprite sheet. Using the same principles, you can make any kind of movement for a character. The video would be too long for me to explain every step for making the jump and attack animations, but that is why I have prepared the sprite sheets and a little guide for you to download. The steps are the same. First, you need to decide how many frames you want your animation to last, then make all of your keyframes, and then go back and fill in the gaps between the keyframes. I made it a little bit easier for you, so I marked every important frame. Feel free to download the whole animation pack down in the description follow along and animate your character. You can find many useful videos on this channel on how you can animate your spreadsheets in GameMaker, so make sure to check them out. And that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!